Annoyingly, we can't fly them at all because of bird flu, so they're in lockdown. Right, been a while since I've uh, posted a video, um, so we'll do one today uh, just to give you a catch up of where we're at. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it last time, but uh, some people will have heard that Charlie isn't actually going to be racing anymore. He's retiring from the sport, which is a bit, um, bit, bit sad, really. Um, he's been racing for 80, no, 70 years, some, just over 70 years, um, and never missed a year, uh, other than obviously when COVID uh, struck. But he's just finding it pretty tough. Um, you know loading all the birds and feeding them and everything so a bit of a shame there but he's still going to keep some birds he's going to breed some he's going to breed us some more youngsters so he'll kind of be uh, racing by proxy in a in a sense um so i'm just going to have a quick update of where we are with the with the birds you can see them here now um uh, mostly through the through the malt i think some of them have got one or two flights left um but most of them are pretty good they've just been fed I forgot to feed them, well I didn't forget, I was at work till late, by the time I got back it was dark, so I didn't get to feed them yesterday, so I fed them this morning, give them a good scrape out and clean. Um, I haven't really made any progress with the second loft yet because I've uh, been working pretty hard to try and get the extension built uh, and finished, I've been plastering that any spare time I've had. Um, and then the next thing we need to do is look at um, pairing the birds up, so we're going to have a bit of a chat about that, what my ideas and plans are. Uh, to, to go ahead with that, so yeah. We use the life out of the tea bag. You gonna help me today, then, Rufus? We've got some jobs to do. Tidy in the garden. Could be one of them. Guys, we need a good clean out, don't we? Right, so I haven't really been in. in my tripod level, that'll do. I haven't really been in with the birds at all um, this week or the last month, really, uh, because I've been so busy at work. It's our busiest time, and what I thought. Um, it doesn't really matter that much because it's the end of the season but what i've now got to do is think about pairing them up because i'm thinking about pairing them up around january it's what most people say is uh after after blackpool show um pigeon show which is in middle of january it's when most people pair up but some people are pairing up now some people are pairing up uh, over christmas um i'm not 100 percent sure yet i haven't decided but there's a couple of things that i've thought about and one of them is uh some people put lights on for the birds a few weeks before they pair them up uh, so that they think it's more like spring and so that you're more likely to improve the fertility rate apparently and that kind of makes sense really um, if they think that's when it's you know the time to lay uh, so long as it's not too cold and uh, and then the other thing I thought about was wouldn't it be cool or interesting if I paired because I've got a couple of birds that I've got no intention of breeding from because they didn't perform very well but um, it would be interesting wouldn't it to see if what would happen if I pair the winner, the fed winner, the, the, the bird that's, and it actually turns out to be a hen, the one that laid the eggs already. It's the aeroplane. What would happen if I paired the fed winner, which is a hen, with the one that came second or third, either uh, 1998, um, and then I also paired the two that performed the worst throughout the season and see what happens with their offspring. A little bit of an experiment, not all that scientific because there'll only be, what, two of each maybe uh, to compare to and that's assuming that they even make it through to racing. But I just thought it might be an interesting one to try out. I don't know what anybody else thinks or anyone else has tried that. But anyway, today I've got loads of things to do. I need to scrape out the outside and clean that down. I'm going to scrape out the insides uh, of the lofts because I'm going to put all the cocks into the aviary and then I'll scrape their section out and then I'll shimmy the hens through into the cock section and scrape the hen section out um, give it all a good clean down and then um, put them all back in and annoyingly we can't fly them at all because of bird flu so they're in lockdown um, which is a bit of a pain plan here is whilst it's the off season I want to keep these birds trained up 
I want them to still understand that every time I put this crate by the aviary, they're going to jump in because they're going to want feeding. And they've got to get in. You guys need a good scrape out, don't you? There we go. They're all out of here. And then I can just block this off. There we go. And stop them getting in. And now I can scrape this place out because I haven't scraped it for two days. As you can tell, I did have a leak here and um, it was always getting wet there and I couldn't work out why. It turns out it was coming through there obviously so I've put some glass up and a little shield and it seems to have worked a treat. It's actually quite difficult to, uh, not difficult but it's can be quite a nuisance sometimes when you're trying to film the birds but also look after them because you, you just want to get on with it sometimes and you're in a bit of a rush but then you think oh I haven't done any video for ages so I should probably record it whilst I do it and then you think well is anybody really interested in me scraping droppings from a from a loft the answer is probably no, but in the spirit of um, being true to the sport and the hobby, I've got to show everything. So these are my boxes, and as you can see, the birds are roosting in them now, which is good because there's droppings in all of them. That's two or three nights now. Um, I've taken all the V-perches down to force them to use it. This one they're, they're not using, and I wonder if it's because the bird that's in this one um, I wonder if the bird that's in, in this box here is, has, has also commandeered this one, is not letting anybody go in that one, so uh, I'm going to have to look at that and see what's going on. They get used to the boxes and then I'm going to build some box fronts so I can put the bowls in there and then get them used to uh, all nesting together. So, right, this is the fun bit, time for uh, scraping out. And uh, begin. Scraping. I I've obviously uh, put a video out recently about trying to get more people into the hobby and I think more people would but they've got to know what they're getting themselves into a loose loose side there I need to nail that in and I've mentioned it before but this is probably what most people will put most people off is, is scraping out but actually I've been around the garden the driveway today and I can see a bit of blood there so I've obviously been fighting um, I've been around the driveway today and uh, picking up dog poo and actually I'd much rather do this than pick up dog poo. Um, so if you've got dogs or you've had kids, even if you've got a cat, then this is uh, considerably less disgusting than all of those things. And also, you know, your cat isn't going to win you any money or races, so, you know, at least you know that you might be getting something back out of it. Oh, yuck. Here's a lovely pile of guano. Apparently, they used to use this stuff for uh, saltpeter to uh, make gunpowder. It's actually quite valuable. see this green this is because I didn't get to feed the birds last night so that's why I'm doing everything this morning they're all a bit hungry it was dark by the time I got home from work Shit train coming through look at this look all professional oh no No, wrong way. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now, one problem we've got is I think we've got 14 hens. 12 cocks and 14 hens. However, 
what's going on here i think the weather's changed now that the shed's moving and my latch that i put on in the summer isn't working okay so so runny nose so uh i've got 26 birds in total and um I think 14 of those are hens, 12 of those are cocks, and we've got 12 foxes. Now there were, <coughs> there's at least two birds that I'm not gonna breed from, for sure. That's Ryan, not Brian, because it turned out to be an absolute rubbish um, bird. He just, uh, he, she, um, she never came home, and I had to go and, uh, so had to go and, well she did, but she wouldn't, she had two races and she wouldn't come back. It's Archie's bird. Um, and she just kept going back to the same loft in, in Darlington. Uh, she literally, from one race in Darlington, she went up and then went straight back down into somebody else's loft. So um, she's got two homes, so I'm probably not gonna breed from her, but I might use her to raise the eggs of another bird. Um, and then there's obviously the fancy bird from, from Charlie. Uh, I won't be breeding from that one either. So I've got 12 of each, I think, but I'm not 100% sure I've got the sexes right. Um, I think I've got, I think I've got 14 hens, 12 cocks, um, but they haven't all decided on their pronouns yet, so uh, I might have a couple of they, them's in there. In theory, I've got 12 foxes, 12 hens, and 12 cocks I want to breed from, so um, that might work out quite good. Man, I'm looking uh, wrinkly and old. Please do not poo on me. Some people do this every day, and obviously it doesn't take as long if you do it every day, but... The amount of birds I've got, the amount of space they've got, and the job I have, it gets done once every two days, sometimes once every three. And it takes about, let's say, 20 minutes if I do it. And um, if I do it every two or three days, it's 20 minutes time. To scrape down and clean them up and then a couple of minutes to um to feed them so it's not really that long a lot less time than it takes to walk your dog not that rufus gets walked that much hey rufus one of you is using the drinker as a perch naughty birds need to stop that bird perching on the top of here somehow. I'll have to put something over that that it can't grip. So thanks for doing this every couple of days. Oh, I've got my arse in the camera there, I haven't I? Nobody wants to see that. Clean. Rufus, do you like steak? Do you like onions? Rufus? Rufus, do you like biscuits? <laughs> the plan is to put the new loft here. And originally I was looking at something like an 18 foot by eight, but it's really so expensive uh, at the moment. I can't really justify it. So I think I'm looking at going 16 by six and then I'll build a full length aviary like this uh, across the front of it. And um, I can get one of those uh, brand new for under two thousand pounds, which is still a lot of money really for a shed for pigeons, isn't it? So um, the other option is to build it, but I've priced up the cladding, uh, the same kind of stuff as I've used for this, and it's uh, you know it's it's almost half that, just at that, and then you've got the flooring and the um, the piles and the, the 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 CLS for building the stud work and the roof and the felt and all the internals and everything. So and then the labour. Um, so at the moment, it just seems like sheds and lofts and stuff are just really expensive to, to build or to buy. But 
Um, that's part of it, I guess. Um, I could make do, actually, if I really wanted to. I could make do with just another one of these because um, this is fine for the birds that are in it at the moment. And if I'm getting the same amount of young birds for the next year, then I could just put another one there, you know, 12 foot, two sections. You know, that'd be sufficient. So uh, I don't need to have a, a bigger one. And maybe that might be the way to go is get a, two, a smaller two section loft now and then maybe get a you know like a stock loft or something else uh, a later date so but yeah it's all uh, it's all very expensive but that's the plan anyways to take the trees out there the, the apple tree and the pear tree move them and then um, put it basically there uh, all the, the flower beds gone we've put some grass down there to reseed it and that's kind of dead space anyway um don't really use it other than for those little trees and stuff so i think that is uh, is the plan